All right, we're coming to the close of uh, discussion of differential signaling. Uh, I'm going to talk about how does the noise get into the system and uh, some some notes about a, uh, how does the how do the load terminations look. Okay, let's say you have an unbalanced system, an un unbalanced system. How does noise get into the system? Well, there are three causes, and I'll write out the solutions for those causes. There are three causes. You can have a source imbalance, you can have a cable imbalance or, or trace imbalance, or a load imbalance. And what are the solutions? Well, for the source imbalance, the simplest solution is to use a zero ohm output impedance. Output impedance. That's, uh, you can go back to the previous equations and verify that. And similarly, for the load imbalance, you use an infinite ohm input impedance, input impedance, and you can go back to the equations and verify that for yourself. What about the traces or the cables? Uh, well, you often don't need to actually worry about this very much unless your, tra your cables are very long, and in general you want to pay more attention to the, the source or the load. But, and so what this means is if you're on a PCB, on PCB, you keep your traces close together, keep close together, if you're off of a PCB, off of a printed circuit board, uh, generally you use twisted, twisted pair, or you may want to use twisted pair with shield if you want to pull out all the stops. Generally speaking, the sources in your system are going to be MOSFETs, MOSFETs, or op amps, which may be made with op with MOSFETs and they're going to have very low output impedance, so you don't need to worry too much about that. So let's finish our discussion by talking about the loads and what are the different kinds of loads you can use. Well, there are basically three different options for your load um, if you're not just going to use a straight up resistor. And uh, there are lots of variations within each one, but there are basically three. Let me write them out. There are one, the differential amplifier, two, the instrumentation amplifier, which is basically the same thing as the differential amplifier with a slight tweak on it, and third, uh, transformer coupled input, and I'm not going to cover that much here. L let me talk about these two. I'm going to scroll down and draw. This is a differential amplifier. It's just an op amp surrounded by some feedback resistors here, R1 and R2. Uh, this is a differential input, so we have V1 coming in here, V2 coming in here, and we get one output, single-ended output, which would feed into our system, our remaining system for, for measurement. Uh, let's say, well, first of all, what are some characteristics of a good op amp? So it's going to have a very high input impedance, Rn. This is going to be basically infinity, a very low output impedance. This is going to be zero ohms, a, a very high gain. Uh, voltage gain here, A times uh, the input impedance, so that A would be infinity, and a common mode rejection ratio of infinity, so it's very balanced between these two terminals. And that would be the CMRR that you spec when you're picking out components. All right, let's say that uh, R1 equals R2, then that implies V0 equals V2 minus V1. Good. That would be uh, just the difference of the input voltages, and that is a differential amplifier. But let's say we wanted to amplify the difference between these two signals, V1 and V2. Um, and to do that, let me write out a temporary node, VA, VA. Uh, those voltages should be the same from op amp analysis. Let me just write out a couple equations. VA equals V2, R2 divided by R1 plus R2, and the second equation is V1 minus VA divided by R1 equals VA minus V0 over R2. And you can solve these two equations yourself. If you want to add gain to your differential signal, you would just make R2 greater than R1, and you can run through these equations to convince yourself of that. Now there is a problem with the differential amplifier, and it happens when uh, the load resistance isn't high enough for adequate CMRR of your application. So typically 
R1 and R2 are going to be around maybe 100 kilo ohms to 1 mega ohm, maybe a little more, maybe a little little more than this, maybe a little less than this, but generally in that ballpark. And if you wanted V1 and V2 to see a much higher input impedance to the to the load than, than that, then you need to use an instrumentation amplifier. Let me scroll down and draw that. This is an instrumentation amplifier. From this point on, it's just the differential amplifier that we saw up above. The only difference is over here we've added some buffers uh, where we have very high impedance uh, inputs for V1 and V2 and it flows through the rest of the system. Often you'll see these things drawn as maybe a uh, KRF feedback resistor there as well as some RF resistor there and a resistor there where K is less than 1. And the reason for that is that by adjusting the single resistor, you can adjust the, the differential gain of the system. But don't get too caught up in that. Uh, use an instrumentation amplifier when you want a very high input impedance. One thing I should note is that V1 and V2, if they are uh, AC coupled, you need to make sure that the system is constructed properly to keep uh, the um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the whatever amplifiers are feeding the system within their, their bias, um, allowed bias point.